What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another brand new installment of Renegades Reviews, exclusively here as always on the Casa D18 Studios channel. I, of course, am your host, the Renegade JJ Williams. Happy Sunday. What? It's Sunday? That's right. It is October 1st, and it is the day we kick off our 31 Days of Horror. We're going to be featuring Stephen King movies all month, and we're going to kick things off with Carrie. Starring Sissy Spacek, Piper Laurie, Amy Irving, William Catt, Nancy Allen, John Travolta, Betty Buckley, and PJ Souls. What's going on, everybody? Thank you for joining me here once again for another brand new installment of Renegades Reviews. As I said in the introduction, it is Sunday. It is the official kickoff of the week. Happy Sunday, and I hope you're strapped in and ready to enjoy the 31 days of horror that we've got coming up this month as we take a look at Stephen King films. Now, in an effort to not have to try to hunt and scrounge for ways to include some of his features, there will be a couple of films this month, like The Running Man, like Shawshank Redemption, like Stand By Me, that aren't exactly horror films. But it makes it easier for me in the long run as opposed to try to find a way to group those into another month down the road. Also, we're going to be doing away with movies with one sequel and trilogies and that type of stuff because there's some movies, Creepshow, Creepshow 2, Pet Cemetery, Pet Cemetery 2. We're going to be doing all those over the course of this month. And into the next time we do Stephen King movies, because there's so many films, we're going to have to come back to him down the road. So movies where there's an original and a remake, like Firestarter, like It, like Carrie, we're going to just ignore those. And we're going to go ahead and feature them during this month, because you got to have the greatest hits when you're talking about Stephen King. Otherwise, you lose carry otherwise you lose the shining which has a sequel to it you lose creep show you lose firestarter you lose it you lose some of the best stephen king movies if you try and lump those into other months like we normally do here on renegades reviews so we're throwing all that out this time we're going to go through stephen king's filmography from carry all the way up to today Not this month, because we're only going to do 31 movies. But we do have some lined up already for a Stephen King Part 2. Somewhere down the road, like Barry Madeline likes to say. But we're getting ahead of ourselves. Let's get into the 1976 film, Carrie. And as our movie opens, shy 16-year-old Carrie White lives with her frantically religious and unstable mother, Margaret. She is unpopular at school and is often bullied by her peers. When Carrie experiences her first period in the school shower, she panics, having never been told about menstruation. Carrie's classmates proceed to throw tampons and sanitary pads at her while chanting, plug it up, until the gym teacher, Miss Collins, intervenes. Following conversations with Miss Collins and the principal, Carrie is dismissed from school for the rest of the day. After arriving at home, Margaret tells Carrie that her menstruation is caused by sin, and she locks Carrie into an altar-like prayer closet in order to have her pray for her forgiveness. Back at school, Collins reprimands Carrie's tormentors by punishing them with a week-long detention during gym class. She threatens those who choose to skip that they will be suspended for three days and will be barred from the upcoming prom. However, Carrie's longtime bully, Chris Hangenson, walks out and gets excluded from the prom. Now plotting revenge against Carrie, Chris and her boyfriend, Billy Nolan, 
break into a farm and kill pigs in order to drain their blood into a bucket, which they place above the school's stage in the gymnasium. Norma, Chris's best friend and a prominent figure in the school's student council regime, plans to rig the prom queen election in Carrie's favor in order to get her on the stage. Meanwhile, Sue Snell, a deeply remorseful classmate, asks her handsome and popular boyfriend, Tommy Ross, to invite Carrie to the prom. Carrie believes that the invitation is a prank, but Tommy insists that it is genuine, and she reluctantly accepts after Miss Collins consoles her. Back at home, she begins to discover that she has telekinesis as she begins to shake off some of her shyness. Despite Margaret's protests, Carrie puts on a flattering dress and hairstyle in order to go to the prom. Margaret sees Carrie use her telekinetic powers and denounces her as a witch before Carrie can leave with Tommy. During the prom, Chris and Billy hide under the stage while the other co-conspirators switch the ballots in order to ensure that Carrie wins the title of prom queen. As Carrie stands on stage with Tommy, finally beginning to feel accepted by her peers, Sue realizes Chris and Billy's plan and begins to intervene. Miss Collins spots Sue and, thinking that she is up to no good, throws her out of the prom. Chris and Billy then seize the moment to pull the rope that is attached to the pig's blood, dousing Carrie as they sneak out of the school. The empty bucket hits the outraged Tommy in the head, and he collapses. The crowd is left shocked and speechless at the prank as Carrie hallucinates that everyone, even Miss Collins, is mocking her, and in a sudden outburst, telekinetically seals the exits and controls a fire hose, which injures several partygoers attempting to escape and sprays the overhead lights. Miss Collins is crushed by a falling basketball backboard, and Carrie's principal and teacher are electrocuted, setting the gym on fire. Carrie exits the gym and seals the doors behind her, trapping the staff and all of her classmates. As Carrie proceeds to walk home, Chris and Billy attempt to run her over with Billy's car, but Carrie causes their car to overturn and explode, killing them both. After Carrie bathes herself at home, Margaret reveals that Carrie was conceived when her husband was drunk, an act that Margaret shamefully admits that she enjoyed. She comforts Carrie and then stabs her in the back with a kitchen knife and begins chasing her throughout the house. Carrie levitates several sharp implements and sends them flying towards Margaret, crucifying her. She then destroys the house and perishes herself. Sometime later, Sue, the only survivor of the prom, has a nightmare in which she goes to lay flowers on the charred remains of Carrie's home, upon which stands a for sale sign vandalized in black paint with the words, Carrie White burns in hell. Suddenly, Carrie's bloody arm reaches from beneath the rubble and grabs Sue's forearm. Sue wakes up screaming and writhing in terror as her mother tries to comfort her, and our movie comes to its close. I thought Carrie was a great way to kick the month off. Now, generally, I like to go in chronological order anyways when I feature an actor, an actress, or a director like Stephen Keen, an author. So Carrie was going to be first anyways, but coming right out of back-to-school month, having done 
the school for good and evil, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, to transfer right into Carrie, another movie that takes place within a high school. Kind of like I talked about with Buffy, it was a perfect transitional movie to move from one theme into the next. So good, couldn't have planned it better if I had tried, but I digress. I love the movie Carrie. I've only ever seen this version, though. I know there was a 2002 made-for-TV movie. There was a sequel to this version called The Rage, Carrie 2. And then there's the more recent version with Chloe Grace Moretz. I've never seen any of those three movies. I've only ever seen this one. And part of that is because of my affinity for this film. I own most of those other things. I'm not sure if I own the Rage Carry 2. But I know I own the Chloe Grace Moretz version. And I know I own the 2002 made for TV version. I've just never watched them. Because when you find something that is as good as this. You're kind of skeptical when it comes to remakes. And I've heard people say that, especially the Chloe Grace Moretz version, it's a little bit closer to the book, goes a little bit more in depth in some things and explains some things better. And that's great. When I get to Stephen King part two, I'm sure I'll have to watch those and I'll finally see them then. But this movie is just so phenomenal. There was something to be said, man, about those early Stephen King movies. We'll say from Carrie. 1976 to about 1990, 1991, when it and sometimes they come back came out. Those movies that came out in that time span, that 15 years, if you will, Chef's Kiss. I mean, you figure you've got Carrie, you've got The Shining, you've got Christine, Cujo, Creep Show, Firestarter, Pet Cemetery, the original It, all coming out in those times, plus others plus others, but some of those others I've never seen, so I can't really discuss them until I watch them and we get there. But you figure all those movies I just routed off came out in that 15-year span, and just so good. I mean, if you were going to do a top 10 Stephen King movies, it would be hard-pressed to not just pull 10 from those 15 years and be like, I'm done. So good. John Travolta was in this as Billy, as Chris's boyfriend. Did awesome, even though it was a bit part for him. Sissy Spacek as Carrie, so good. I thought she did a great job of conveying the shyness and the coyness and the timid young girl who had been so sheltered all her life. Piper Laurie is her mom, I thought did a great job. She was just so crazy. Like, you legitimately believe she was knucking futz. When it comes to my rating for Carrie, despite my high praise, I'm not going to give it a perfect five, but I am going to give it four out of five. The story was good. The adaptation was good, in my opinion. The acting was good. The, the effects were phenomenal for 1976. Let's just throw that out there right now also. The, the pig's blood looked like real blood, even though it was corn syrup and food coloring. Just so good. Four out of five stars. What do you guys think of the 1976 original carry? Let me know. If you're watching the premiere, leave your thoughts and comments over here. If you're watching on demand later in the day, leave your thoughts and comments down here. Let's have that conversation, that discussion, that debate, that interaction that I'm always asking you guys for in the comments below. And make sure you guys tune in tomorrow right here to the Casa D18 Studios channel for another brand new installment of Renegades Reviews. And at this point in time, I am honestly not sure which movie will air tomorrow. It will either be Salem's Lot which stars David Soule, James Mason, Lance Kerwin, Bonnie Badia, Lou Ayers, Ed Flanders, Fred Willard, and Julie Cobb, or it will be 
The Shining, starring Jack Nicholson, Shelley Duvall, Danny Lloyd, Scatman Crothers, Philip Stone, Joe Turkle, Barry Nelson, and Lisa and Louise Burns. The reason why this is up in a limbo is because as I film this at 2 o'clock in the afternoon Pacific time on Friday, I have not had an opportunity to watch Salem's Lot yet. It is about a three and a half hour film because it was originally a two part mini series, as a lot of Stephen King films were. And I don't know if I'm going to have the opportunity to watch it over the course of the weekend between simply predicting tonight at five o'clock Pacific, eight Eastern, between simply predicting tomorrow at noon Pacific, three Eastern, between our watch along coverage of WWE NXT No Mercy beginning at 4 o'clock Pacific, 7 Eastern tomorrow. Our coverage of Open Mic Night, which will begin immediately following WWE NXT No Mercy. Between our watch along coverage on Sunday for AEW Wrestle Dream, which I believe begins at 4 o'clock Pacific, 7 Eastern. So, with all those things going on, over the course of this weekend, I don't know if I'm going to have the opportunity to sit through a three and a half hour movie. If I'm able to, it'll go up on Monday. If I'm not able to, you'll get The Shining because I was able to watch that last night. Went ahead and watched it out of order because that was a shorter movie. Had the time last night. Didn't have three and a half hours, but I had two hours. So that's why everything is kind of in a limbo, if you will, for Monday. Regardless of all of that, though, you don't want to miss out on any of that content right here on the Casa D18 Studios channel, the Jeff Meacham Network, the Simple Man's brand, and across the greater Jeff Meacham Network Multiverse of Media. Again, we've got Salem's Lot or The Shining coming up on Monday. We've got two episodes of Simply Predicting. We've got two watch-alongs and open mic night all in store for you just over the next couple of days. So make sure you smash that like button. Make sure you're subscribed. Make sure that notification bell is turned on so you don't miss out anytime a video drops right here on the Casa D18 Studios channel or anytime we go live. As is the case with Stat Boy Sports Bar, Open Mic Night, Pay-Per-View PLE, Watch Long Coverage, etc. Share these videos with your family, friends, loved ones, co-workers, movie fanatics, cinephiles in your life. Fans of Sissy Spacek, fans of Piper Laurie, fans of John Travolta, fans of Stephen King. Anybody you can think of that would enjoy this content in this video, share it with them as it's the only way we're going to keep my visibility up and YouTube's algorithms now that we are fact to monetize channel right here on the platform. Thank you once again to everybody out there who joined me and tuned in today. It means so much more to me than you guys will ever know. I will see you guys tomorrow. Now, preview time. So let's take a look at what's coming your way.